This is the tale of The Doll's House by Ruma Godden, with illustrations by Jane Ray, read by Sasha Cooper. On behalf of Quarantine Kids Storytime, we would just like to say a huge thank you to the Ruma Godden Literary Trust and Jane Murray Flutter, Ruma Godden's daughter, for granting us permission to read The Doll's House. If you'd like to know more information about Ruma Godden's works, you can visit the Literary Trust's website, www.rumagodden.com. I will also put this link down in the description box for you. Thank you once again for tuning in. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the adventures that Totty and her friends have. Enjoy. Chapter 10 Totty was not hurt. Such happiness flowed through her that she felt as though the sap of her tree had risen in her wood, as it once had every spring, and was running through her. "'Totty is happy because the Queen wanted to buy her,' said the other dolls. "'She is happy because the Queen couldn't buy her.' Totty could have corrected them. "'But what was it all about?' asked Totty. "'Emily and Charlotte must have had a change of heart.' That was as near as Totty came to understanding the truth, and it was very near the truth. "'God bless the Queen,' said Totty. "'God bless the Queen!' But Marchpane was bitterly jealous. Chapter 11 Meanwhile, the Plantagenet family had moved into the doll's house. They had made it completely their own, though the chairs were not ready yet, and the lace curtains had not come. Mr. Plantagenet, Birdie, Apple, and Dana had settled down. The house was clean from top to bottom. There were new sheets and pillows, those mouse-sized pillows, and nicked round blankets on the beds. Apple had his patchwork quilt. The carpets were nailed down, and their washing had made their colours fresh. Mine is pink as pink as roses, a dapple blossom and nail polish, sang Birdie. The rust had been scarred and scraped from the stoves and pots and pans, and the seashells had been glued back again on the picture frames. No family could have been happier than the Plantagenets were now. Dana had his kennel to himself, and it was filled with real chopped up straw that Emily had begged from a stable in the mews and cut up with her scissors. Apple had the whole house to play in, and he had learned the dangerous practice of somersaulting down the stairs. He wished that Charlotte would sit him at the top, and then, quite soon, he would manage to overbalance and somersault down to the bottom. Birdie had her room with the pink carpet, and every morning, she dusted it with her feather broom while she sang all the songs that she felt her bird in the birdcage would sing, though what of her was dusting and what singing, Birdie sometimes did not know. "'Do I sing with my hands and dust with my voice?' asked Birdie. "'I might. I do not know. But I am happy, happy, happy!' And she flicked with the feather broom, and sang a trill. So happy, sang Birdie. Emily had made her a flyaway apron with embroidery cotton strings that were pink like the carpet. My carpet, sang Birdie. How I like pink. Trilla, trilla, trilla. How different was the sound of Birdie's la from the walking dolls. And Mr. Plantagenet? Mr. Plantagenet was different. He looked heavier. The porcelain of his face and hands seemed brighter, cleaner. The checks on his suit seemed more clearly marked, his red ribbon tie more crisp. When he held his walking stick, it looked as if he would swing it at any moment. The house was a house to be proud of, well built, solid down to the last windowsill, and up to the wooden chimney. 
it was warm, gay, comfortable, and there was the lamp and its birthday cake candle for when it was dark. Emily and Charlotte often lit it, and when they had finished playing, they shut the front and left the Plantagenets safe inside. While Birdie dusted and Apple somersaulted on the stairs and Dana lay in his kennel, Mr. Plantagenet sat in the sitting room reading the little papers Emily made for him and thinking what it would be like when the new chairs and curtains came. For the moment, he had to sit on one of the bedroom chairs. He was quite happy sitting in the sitting room, but he began to feel that if he were a real master of the house, he should, like father, go to the office. I wish they would think of getting me an office, said Mr. Plantagenet. I should like to go to the office very much. They had kept a place for Totty. There was a bed waiting for her in the same room as Apple, the room with the blue carpet. Mr. Plantagenet slept with Birdie. Totty's clothes were in the cupboard. Her red knitted cloak hung in the hall with Birdie's straw hat with the feather. Of course, we are all waiting for Totty, said Mr. Plantagenet. Trilla, Trilla, I wish Totty were here, sang Birdie. Then we could cook little pretending flower pies and hundred and thousand sweets. Do you know hundreds and thousands? They make good dolls' house sweets. If Totty were here, she would have let me somersault downstairs. But I wish Totty were here, said Apple. It doesn't feel like our home without Totty, said Mr. Plantagenet. Then his face looked stiff, and he dropped his walking stick. Birdie, he said. Suppose it isn't our house after all. Suppose we have made a mistake. They couldn't take it away from us. Could they, Birdie? I don't understand, said Birdie. And she lowered her broom and the embroidery cotton strings of her apron sank and was still. What do you mean? I don't understand. She said with a sound like a whimper. Oh, no, 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 no. Don't think about it. I was only joking, said Mr. Plantagenet quickly. Were you? It didn't sound like a joke. Don't think about it. You go on with your dusting, my dear. May I? Are you sure? Of course, Birdie, dear. Of course. Forget about it. Mr. Plantagenet soon forgot about it himself. He had discovered that when the birthday cake candle in the lamp was lit, the roses in the vase threw a tiny, real shadow of themselves on the table. Now that's a better scenario, don't you think, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls? I wonder what Totty's going to make of the new doll's house now. Tune in tomorrow for the next exciting instalment of The Doll's House. By Ruma Godden. My name's been Sasha Cooper. Take care, everybody, and stay safe. Bye bye.